Watch. Just as pure as a driven snow. But big thing, no effort. No effort. No effort at all. Tell us about the business area. What's the business area, Mo? Swing's only three feet long from here to here. That's your business area in this game of golf. It's how you arrive here to here. Make sure you arrive there the way, you, the way you're supposed to, right? That's where I arrive so good every time. Three feet from, behind, from three feet behind the ball, just three feet in front of it. My club stays on the level of the ball. Because you have such great extension going back and extension going through in the business area, right? So, oh, yes. So what, what was the coin doing? What was that there for? That's kept my muscles, stretching my muscles. This is what I used to practice by the hour with my driver. Tick. That's how far back I want the club on the ground with my driver. And then 22 inches past, I used to put two tees up and make sure I hit the tees with the blade square. Not. And that's what I see now. I see all that now in my imagination. And the ball goes dead straight every time. And pure. Pure and straight in a, in a very simple way. The ball goes dead straight every time. Your mind's a generator, your body's a motor. Club faces a trigger, golf ball's a bullet. Now aim and fire. We aim, but we don't fire, we direct. People direct the club. I'm the only guy that fires. Did your legs get narrower or did they get wider, Mo? Going through the ball? Oh, wider, way wider. Can you show us that? Way wider. That's the other thing and I do. What does so it mean? What is it? They widen. They're not doing that. They're doing. Oh, yes. That's the other thing I do so well. What does that do? Keeps the, everything online. Can't get offline. I can't spin. I'm, I'm lateraling too much. I can't spin. So it shows the wide. And the other players do what? And the right knee goes to where with a... Oh, towards the ball. Instead of in behind this guy, it goes... That's bogey golf. That's double bogey golf. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heck. Who's the straightest that ever lived, Mo, do you think? Right here. Other guys, golf balls finished up as straight as me, but it didn't get there straight. They got a little draw or fade. Mine are just like arrows. Mine, from the time I hit, the, I, if there's ever a tournament at midnight, I'd be the only guy under par. I, I know right where to walk. Right down the middle. I do. I could do it by just by how it felt. That one's a little, here, look. Just as straight as you can draw a line. But I got the simplest moving golf, even though it's awkward looking. But anybody that knows the golf swing, like you, <laughs> I'm the first guy you never can tell. You couldn't help in your whole life. I'm the first golfer that ever came to you, that you can't help. You look at me for the first time, look like a 120 shooter. The style, but once I move, oh man. Oh. And what else does that look like when you do that? Oh, What's that? A Jehovah what? Jehovah Witness, yeah. Does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> look. <laughs> and then boom. <laughs> Here's a ball in the divot, Mo, and, and what, do, what do you treat this like? I mean, why do you hit it so straight? You, you're remarkable because you not only hit it out of the divot, but you also hit it solidly and dead straight every time. Because I don't put no fierce into it. Now the lie, I don't let the lie control me. I swing easier but much smoother when I, when I got a lie like that. Now, you're not going for distance now. You're just trying to advance the ball. That just, you just got a bad break on the fairway. But still hit it dead straight every time. See? But what do people do now? <laughs> Look, I dug for gold. The lie's controlling them. 
To me, it's there, okay. That's why you got lofted clubs. Get them out. That's why you got two, three to four to five wood. It's a, that's where, that's where you take your four wood and just dig it out. Tell us about this style, Mo. Were you ever taught this style or, no. or did you develop it yourself? All, all, all by myself. Just my feel. As I kept hitting five, eight hundred balls every day for 12 years and just my feel what felt so good to me. No, nobody could teach me this. Who, who would teach you this? <laughs> Should anyone try that? No, no. No, just something. Something that came to me. What would happen if they tried that? Oh, they wouldn't even touch the ball. <laughs> they wouldn't even touch. They wouldn't even touch the golf ball. <laughs> so you don't recommend what we're seeing then? Not, not to people. Oh, they couldn't do this. No, I should say not. <laughs> Look. <laughs> no. Why do you hit it so straight, so well, every single time? Because of the simplicity. But what else is there? Confidence. And I love my club. I'm married to it. I put him in, there's, 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 every night there's, there's where he goes, in my bedroom. Right, keep him red hot, because I know he's going to hit good shots for me tomorrow. Every time, he goes right, hits it right where, right where I want him to go every time. He never talks back to me. You ever think about distance, Mo? Do you no. ever think about it? No, only purity of technique. That, that'll give me it, but I never think of distance. No, I'm never distant, or, I've never been distant oriented in my life. I know I couldn't do it, so why, why try to do something I know I couldn't do? So it's just, but purity. It's just a word to you then. Distance. That's all. But that word purity of technique, that's what I knew I could do. I'm the only golfer that lets my swing balance me. I don't try and balance my swing. My swing balances me. Because it's so effortless. You have terrific mind pictures, Mo. Do you, do you see it in your mind all the time before you do every shot? Not only see it, I taste it. Oh no, not only, not only see it, I taste it. Oh yes, it's choking me. The, the purity of technique is choking me. Oh yes, I always see it, but I taste it too. If I could taste that before I hit it. Look. So what do you see? What's the visual pun? I mean, what do you actually see before you swing the forward? Where I want to land the ball on the green. Where I want to land it, on the green. Not short of the green, on the green with a forward. Oh, here. I can see it, it's going to land foot on the green. Okay. That one just landed one foot on the green, exactly. Then it rolled up to the hole. How would you describe your divots, Mo? Dead square, dead square to the target. At the same depth. No part is deeper than any other part. If I hit off your head, I'll just take your hair off. I wouldn't touch your head. If I hit off your watch, I'd just scrape the glass. I wouldn't break it. Here, right here, I'm hitting off your head. See? Didn't even touch the ground. Didn't even touch the ground. See? Bacon strips, not pork chops? Oh, that's every shot I hit. Strictly bacon strips. Never pork chops, no. Here's another one right off your watch. Okay. Still 12 o'clock on your watch. Oh yeah. Yep. Modern swing mode seems to go around the player more and your, your swing seems to stay in the fairway. Is that one of the thoughts you have, keeping oh, your hands in the fairway? Oh yes. Keeping your arms in the swing fairway? Swing through the golf course. Could you show Not us around. that? Swing through the golf course. Okay. Never let my hands get out of play. Never. Oh, they're always in play. Look so where do they go then? Oh. They're going out of play almost. Oh, back here, around here. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> they're trying to do figure eights. You've got such a marvelous, that's probably the, the wonderful thing that you have more than anyone, a lag so late into the ball. It is from pulling, but just show us what that is, would you, and explain it. Here's a lot of lag. Look at the lateral motion I got. I got such lateral motion. Does it not, come, does it come not, from the lateral motion or yes. is it done from holding it back? No, lateral motion. I, I couldn't have that much if I didn't. And keep that bent. Don't straighten it. Never have, every time you straighten it, your shoulders and chest are going backwards. Mine are never going backwards. They're always going forward. 
I'm known in golf where my chest and everything is always going forward. When you straighten your left leg, things start going back. Your chest and your shoulders go back. That's bad. I'm always going forward. You're so precise, Mo. What, what was that story that you were telling us about playing 36 hole events? And Hogan and I were very happy when they took 36 holes away in one day. Because in the afternoon, we were in our morning divots. And we were. You never seem to say anything bad about your shot. So in your, in your mind, you've never actually missed a shot. No, That's no. the remarkable thing about the way you see things. Oh, no, never, never a bad shot, no. Never, that's not, there's no bad shots in my bag. If I, if I did, I'll, I'll sell them. I only see good shots. All I see, that's all I see, good shots. Never see a bad shot. Never. No. Oh, you're such a tremendous driver of the ball because your accuracy is incredible. What is it that does it for you? Well, a combination of both three things. Big thing is extension. That I keep the club under myself so long. I'm not in a hurry to up, only behind me and in front of me. But, but like I said before, the triangle of my arms is what does it. That and great extension and great balance. So with the driver mode, you get wider and further away. You stretch more with the arms and, yep. and widen the feet as well. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, considerably wider and stretch more. Yeah. See right there. Mm -hmm. How long have you been using that T, Mo? Just over seven years now. Never, never move. Just leave it right there. You must be the only living walking machine then, right? I am, yeah. Oh, I am. Oh, I am. <laughs> I am the only walking machine. <laughs> you always keep your toes in front of your heels? When I walk down the fairway, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never, never. Always straight. Right down the middle of the fairway. That's what I was taught. Keep your toes ahead of your heels and you can't go wrong. <laughs> what do most people do? The army song. <laughs> right, left, right, left, right, left. Not me. 45 years now, dead straight. I had one ball out of bounds in seven years in tournaments. Only had one. Only one ball out of bounds. So when did your swing develop the most into being what it is today as far as being so precise and so consistent? When I was 22. How long did it took to, till you were 22 to develop it? About, about seven good years. Right. Yeah. Because we didn't have the things you have today. And what's that? TV and good teachers and couldn't afford it and uh, couldn't, go, couldn't hit a ball and go right there and see ourselves like you can today. We only had to do it by feel or somebody else's word. <laughs> One guy said this, the next guy said something. Now you're getting all screwed up. You don't know which one to listen to. <laughs> guys that think they know it, but they don't. <laughs> well, who influenced you then? Somebody must have influenced you who you saw, right? Not really, not my day. No? no not to stand and, and do all what I'm doing, no. We had good players, but not they, they didn't stand or do anything like I did, no, no. So the game just influenced you? Yep. Yeah. And you figured it out from there? Yes. Just like Torino did. Torino with his... <laughs> nice little fade. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what was the best swing thought you had when you played? What was the best swing thought that you had when you played your best golf? Stay with every shot. Stay, Stay with, with it. Stay with the shot. Could you show us that so See? that we all know what that means? <laughs> See? I stayed with the shot. I stayed with it. And what would, now, be, what would be a bad thing, to pull away from it? Or, or... Stand up out of it? Worst thing that people do is, you know yourself, is they make themselves taller. That's one thing I never did in my life, was make myself taller. If anything, lower, but not taller. 
taller and you go, you got marks out here. So you're staying level through the bowl more. Oh, yes. See, right here. Okay. Well, what would be the reason, you got such a wonderfully repeating swing, what would be the reason why you didn't uh, compete longer? Why in what didn't terms? you compete longer in tournaments? Was it the money? No money. Didn't have enough money? <laughs> Not in our country in those days. Hockey's our game. Right. Golf was just, still is. Golf was just secondary up there. In fact, my, my boyfriend's my own father called me crazy. They never saw, my whole family has never seen me hit a ball in my life. Not in actual life. Right. Only in the part of watching TV. But never out there in person. Never. And we've had tournaments right in our own city. Canadian Open, PGA, Ontario Amateur, and all this stuff we had right in our own city. Never came and saw me. No. They never encouraged me. They discouraged me. My mother wanted me to do what my brothers and sisters do. Was you really play hockey, really? Was it? Well, to get into work, hockey. Work at a factory. Do the so not play golf. Uh, heck. This must be the most repeating swing on record, Mo, uh, Mo, isn't it, really? Because everything that you do repeats and repeats and repeats. But I never got there, so I never got up mixed up in my mind what I wanted to do. I just had my one way, in, and that's what I stuck to. And now I became the best striker of a golf ball the world's ever known. Not by my say, by all the best players and teachers. Is a two-handed grip, uh, do you think, would you recommend that more than the other two? Yes. And why do you feel that the other two are... Your, your hands are too bundled up. Your muscles are... Like as if you're... I'm, I feel like I'm free as a bird. And I am. And that just helps my right arm to... straighten out. So actually your hands are going longer down the handle, not shorter or shrinking That's up right. the handle. Not this, no. Right. No. So, so what do you feel about the Varden grip as far in terms of efficiency? Is it terrible? We weaker, is it? Terrible. T too, many, too much room for air. There's more room for air if you're in your fingers. I'm... Especially if you overlap then. Oh, right? yes. Yes. And that would be the same for the interlock grip? What would same you thing, about? yes. Oh, that's more yet. <laughs> so that now you got two fingers over top of others. Look at the muscles you can hurt yourself with. I can't hurt any, because they're, they're not on top of each other. When you're hitting that hard, that much, and look, you got to, you're bound to hurt. Here I'm not. I think I would have been hurt by now if I would hit four million balls that way or that way, instead of. What do you think of teaching today, Mo? What you've heard and what, you, what you've read, what do you think of teaching today as it was in your day? It's not, mm -hmm. as, it's not as simple today as it was in our day, because there's so many other different formulas today, or clubs, or balls, or camera work now, and, and a lot more teachers, and they all got different concepts, and uh, you just, people are more mixed up today than they were in our day. We had Tommy Armour, and Harvey Panic. We, we had a, just a few, but today you got so many guys that think they know the golf swing, and they don't. They don't know they're from the hole in the ground. But they only think they know the golf swing, but they don't. So do you think a teacher should change that if it's an odd swing or your, so, your swing is so individualistic? Do you think a t teacher who got hold of you and narrowed your stance and brought you in close to the ball, changed your grip and did all those kind of things, what would it have meant to you? Well, I think I'd be way worse because that wouldn't have suited me. Yeah. I couldn't have made the move I make today if I'd have stood closer and everything. No. So if we see individualism, that we really shouldn't tamper with it too much. No. Let it develop. Why, certainly. Everybody's different. You can't, to, you can't teach two people the same. Everybody's different. Your muscles are different than mine. Your, his muscles are different than yours. His is different than his. It's an individual game. Every shot's individual. Every, sh every <laughs> everything's individual. Everything you, everything you play with in this game is crooked. The wind, the ground, your mind, your muscles, the ball, everything. Are you trying to hit something dead straight? What a fallacy. Oh man, what a fallacy if I ever heard one. When everything you play with in this game is crooked. <laughs> Holy jeez. <laughs> so what's the most important five inches in this game then? Right between the ears. Only two golfers play with 15 clubs. 
Only two golfers in the history of this game, Bobby Jones and Jack Nicklaus. They, they had 15 clubs when they played. 14 and, like Bobby Jones says, my course is only five and a half inches big. Right between the ears. And boy, how true. Good thinking, good golf. Bad thinking, bad golf. <laughs> bad thinking hurts more than bad swinging. <laughs> boy, how true. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm the only guy that knows how to get the club on the ball dead square every time. I'm the only golfer living, because I'm the only guy with a perfect golf grip. The only guy who keeps it so simple. I'm the only I'm the only golfer that knows my swing inside out. I'm the only golfer living that knows my my swing inside out, because I've studied it like like blueprint. Well, that may be one of the best pieces of advice you could give a lot of players. That would that's what they should do, isn't it? Just go and study their own swing oh, and know it inside out. Why, certainly. Which they don't do. They don't no. seem to want to get. They're to studying know somebody their own. else. Yeah. That they can never be. They all want to be Ben Hogan and they swing like. <laughs> they all want to be Julius Boros, like he's going fishing. Boom! Or <laughs> Sneed, great timing, world-class tempo. Can't do. <laughs> but they don't. They don't study their own. Oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, I wish I could. Do, oh, I wish I. Could. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> Jeez. What if I would have copied somebody in my day instead of look? Look. I look like a Jehovah Witness, but addressing a ball. But not when I go through it. Then I look like. Uh, <laughs> you look like the best, Einstein or best, the ball striker in the world. Einstein. Look. 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 What did you? What were your uh, practice rounds like in the Masters? Oh, terrible. Were, were they? Yeah. What did What did you feel about that? Why was that? I, I just came out of the snow. So was, the week before, I was setting up pins in the bowling alley. The week before, really? I was amateur then, and uh, I was setting up pins. The week before, I was setting up. I got the invitation in my pocket. I'm playing the Masters next week, and I'm setting up pins the week before. No practice or nothing. I was the only white guy in the tournament. I was the only white guy in the tournament. <laughs> Everybody else had a tan. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but like you say, here's 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 the club I can make. Here's the one I can make talk. This is the one I like. The entire swing revolves around his setup without question. His unique two-handed grip, the extreme white rigid stance, the extreme distance from the ball, and the club head starting well behind the ball. The backswing starts with the hands and arms and shoulders, the hips stay quiet, the club face is on the strong side, and he sets the hands, there is no rotation because of the grip. The backswing plane is perfect. The, um, the set of his hands and arms on the forward swing are absolutely perfect. He's got the most precise swing plane in golf, a quarter of an inch off. That's a wonderful launching position before impact, a wonderful lateral shift that gives him the delayed hand action, a vertical drop to a horizontal tug, perfect extension at impact. The legs are wide and bent, no left wrist breakdown. The hips and uh, feet are solid, you can't see the cleats, and he's facing the ball well in the shot. This is a wonderful picture of after impact. Right foot still down, right shoulder is past the right hip pocket. The shoulders and arms and hands have outstripped the hips, and the right arm and right wrist totally straight down the target line. Wonderful high finish, forward and high. Arms and hands are always in front of him. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>